Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Today our topic is a question actually. And uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm having a conversation with the Muslim. He's a nice gentleman and I hope he is between you and I right now listening to him and his family. Uh, you know, I always respect the privacy of, uh, privacy of people and uh, I understand that this is a very sensitive topic. Uh, so we will not mention anything about the person but he said to me but don't you think the purpose of Islam generally speaking is something nice I said okay well let me answer you but instead of answering one person I will answer I mean everybody will hear it including you if you go and search online you will find tons of people posting you know such a question like what is the purpose of Islam and here a Muslim he posed for you uh, things which is supposedly uh, what is the purpose like believing in one good one true God I mean isn't it funny to say even to believe in one true God so here you see that the Muslims when they come to you uh, uh, with their answers they say to you we believe in one true God well, how true this God is and how you know he is true you know the Muslim they never met Allah they never heard Allah they never know anything about Allah they don't even know what the word Allah mean and even their prophet or self-acclaimed prophet he have no miracles nobody witnessed anything he even when he went to the seven heavens supposedly it was in, in at night and even his wife she said his body was here and even many Muslims at that time when he claimed that he went to Jerusalem uh, at night they left Islam and they start laughing at him so uh, believing in one true God the one who created the heaven and the earth and everything is exist the God of uh, Adam I think he was say Adam and Noah and Abraham okay hold on first of all how you know even that the God of Abraham is the true God and how you know that your God is the God of Abraham and how you know that your God is the God of Noah and the God of Moses and they and the add Jesus? How do you know that? First of all, this is impossible to be true because the God of Abraham and the God of Moses and the God of uh, uh, all the prophets, he has a spirit. Your God is not a spirit. You see, the Muslim, they say to you, if you remember the dad and even the kid Mimi, you know, the one with the tits, uh, he said not a single Jew not a single Jew believe that God has a son not a single Jew who don't believe in monotheism that only one God there's no trinity if you remember that funny debate you know but I don't blame him you know he is speaking and there's nobody there to respond to his stupidity you need always a fast processor to respond to a liar <clears throat> so uh, If we go in the Quran, we will find the Muslims in the yellow pages of Muhammad saying the following. I don't know why my computer not switching to Arabic. Okay, now it's switching. You remember when this guy, this kid, he says, not a single Jew believe in uh, uh, that there is uh, a trinity, there is uh, two, there is a God have a son. Well, here we go. Chapter 9, verse number 30, it says that the Jews, they say Uzair, and we cannot really find Uzair in the whole Bible. I mean, where is where in the Old Testament there's a guy, his name is Uzair. They, they put for you between two brackets, Ezra. That is very silly. I mean, how Ezra became, uh, how Ezra became Uzair. There's a huge difference. And in the same time, Okay, who is the Israel who became God in the Old Testament? There is no such a thing. So the Jews, they say that there is a guy, his name is Uzair, is the son of Allah. And the Christian, they say that the Messiah is the son of Allah. Okay, hold on. So how he is, how is your God is the God of the Jews and the God of the Christians? When the God of the Jews, according to your Quran, he have a son, his name is Uzair. And the God of the Christians, according to the Quran, he have a son, his name is the Messiah. So how that make your God the God of those people? Same time, the God of the Christians have a spirit, and the God of the Jews has a spirit, and he's a spirit. The God of the, the Muslims, 
he's, he, he's not a spirit. So how that can be God, the same God? So, you know, here you see how loose and how, 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 let us say, I don't know what the word to use in English. You know, English is not my first language, but uh, it's how lousy those answers, how stupid they are. I mean, it's like, a, it's like a, you know, you buy a, a pajama and this pajama have a rubber and it doesn't matter what your size is going to squeeze on you, you know, from the top. But at the same time, you know, the pant is so, so big on you. But there is a rubber in the top. It's very flexible. This is Islam, exactly. So Islam extends itself to make itself fit for everybody. But in fact, the second you start asking questions, you will find Islam far away from those names which is used in the screen. And to believe in the next life and the day of the judgment, when uh, every person will be resurrected back to life, yeah, we should, you should tell him that Allah will resurrect people by his sperm and he will have ejaculation. You missed that point, my friend. Next time you should add it to your answer. And uh, back to life, an individual will be accountable for the deeds uh, they did in this life. No sin inherited, no one will be accountable for another person's sin. All this statement is a false statement. Uh, you know, first of all, you know, uh, Muhammad, he said it clearly. You know, like, ask yourself always. Uh, who knows Islam better? Who knows Islam better? Those people in YouTube, those who make those articles, or Muhammad himself? Just a simple question. Now, if you say to me, those YouTubers, they knew better, or those who make articles, they knew better, then obviously, you know, uh, you are a weird person who have no idea what are you talking about. Because remember, Muslim themselves, they learn everything about the religion from the guy who his name is Muhammad, who originally his name is Qatham, he changed his name, right? Uh, first, he said that nobody will pay for the sin of somebody else, right? And actually, there's a verse in the Quran saying that. But if we go in the Hadith, we will find that this is absolutely false. Even Muhammad, he said, that the Muslims will come in the judgment day and they will have sin in the size of mountains in the size of mountains as you see and who is the one who's talking here this is not a guy Mimi and Fifi and Susu and Dudu and YouTube this is Muhammad himself which Muslims they worship him to the point they would kill you if you say something bad about him like you say he is a liar you know which I say every day uh, so Muhammad said there would come people amongst the Muslims in the day of resurrection which they uh, 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 with as heavy sin as mountains look how heavy the sin is and Allah would forgive them and he would place their sin instead on the Jews and the Christians but if you go back to the article you will see this says that nobody will pay will be accountable for any sin except his sin which is very silly to say when this is not really the true teaching of Islam and Muhammad, he made it clear that Allah will take the sin of the, 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 the Muslims and he will place it in the Jews and the Christians. And here you ask yourself, I mean, where is justice? Uh, Muhammad is giving, you know, uh, promises. You know, talk is cheap anyway. I mean, nothing of this would happen anyway. So the same as promising you women with big breasts and women, they have a, 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 a private part which fit for English male private part. Uh, all those are talk is cheap and you know so Muslims they go and fight and they die for him and Muhammad is dead already but still they are fighting hoping they will go to heaven so all what we see here in this article is nothing to do with the truth as an example here it says to believe in the next life and the day of judgment when every person will be resurrected back to life individual accountable for the deeds but isn't it Muhammad he said the following I mean it's endless how much they lie when they try to present their religion to us Muhammad he made it clear that there's no deeds you do is going to save you. There's no deed you do will make you go to heaven. It is what's written for you as a destiny will make you go to heaven. And here the hadith in front of us, and this is Sahih al-Bukhari, so Muslims cannot say, Muhammadan cannot say, those are not true. So Muhammad he swear by Allah, saying, I and, and by Allah, a person among you, 
uh, or a man he may do, do the deeds of uh, fire till there is only a cupid or an arm breathe distance between him and the fire and but when what is written by Allah which Allah he ordered the angel to write this is a destiny proceed and he does the deeds of people of paradise and he entered so now this person he switched against his will his will is to do what is to do the work of hellfire his will is to do everything bad like to be friend to the Christians which is forbidden in the Quran chapter 5 verse number 51 uh, to be nice to his parents if they are non-Muslims, which is forbidden in the Quran. So this is a person who do everything wrong. He don't hate the Christian. He don't hate the Jews, as chapter five, verse fourteen, etc., saying. Uh, he don't want to fight the Christians, as chapter nine, nine twenty-nine. Uh, he don't believe that uh, Allah should spread hate, as chapter five, verse fourteen. Uh, he don't believe any of this, and that will make him a bad person, according to Islam. But now. This person is doing all those things, which will lead him to hellfire. But then what is written by Allah will take over and proceed, and then he will do the act of paradise and he enter, which means an act which is not his act. It is written for him. It's a program. So what Muhammad is saying to us, that we are the same as insect. You know, from the second you are born, you do certain things which is written inside you, in your DNA. And this DNA is not your will it is the will of Allah which is written there in a certain point would be activated and then is going to do what is going to make you go where to go and then Muhammad continues saying and a man may do the deeds of people of paradise till there is only a cupid or a two between him and paradise and then that is written proceed and he does the deeds of people of hellfire and he entered so Muhammad here he go to the opposite direction and again prove to us that all the promises of Muhammad is absolutely false because if you go in the Quran and if you type the word garden as an example all those promises is about you will receive a garden uh, full of fruits uh, zucchini watermelon you know uh, banana tanana uh, all of those you know you will have them in heaven if you believe in Allah and but now we found that's any deeds you do it doesn't save your reading it's just a stupid promise because this is contradiction for what we see in front of us on the screen the hadith we showed you which is very uh, authentic is totally the opposite of what the Quran here is saying but give a glad tidings to those who believe and work righteousness and their uh, uh, portion is guarding beneath which river flow okay so but here so here it says that if you do what is considered righteousness Islam which is evil uh, and you know I change anyone to say righteousness Islam is not evil because it's righteousness to go and fight the Jews and kill them and you know the Quran order that it's righteousness to hate people who they are not Muslims and chapter 3 verse 28 chapter 5 14 chapter 5, uh, 9 20, uh, 29 etc and it's righteous to attack the Roman to get the blondie girls. So, if you do the righteous work, you do jihad for Allah, you join Al Qaeda, ISIS, and then you will get the garden, and the garden is full of women who have big boobs. Okay, that's wonderful. But then we find Muhammad saying that this is all is nothing, is not really true. None of this will save you. Actually, Muhammad he said uh, clearly that. Uh, deeds have nothing to do with your salvation including his deed uh, we can go and find the reference give me a second if we go here <coughs> actually this hadith is good to show but uh, let us show it later uh, here uh, As you see here in front of you, Muhammad is making it clear uh, that none of you will be rescued by his work. They said to him, even you, Prophet of Allah, he says, even I. Abu Hurairah reported that Allah Messenger saying, none of you will be rescued by his work. 
he he was asked, which means they asked Muhammad, uh, if not even you, he replied, not even I, unless Allah, he cover me with his mercy. So the verse here absolutely is a false statement Muhammad he is making up because we cannot approve both. One of them have to be wrong. One of them have to be wrong. They cannot be both are true. For your deed will not save you. Some translation here they try to fabricate and say it says his deed alone. But the fact nowhere it says that. It says here. This is the Arabic and you can read it. Nowhere it says uh, his work only. It says uh, None of you his work will be saved by salvation. Actually, you can copy the text in Arabic and you can take it to Google translation and you will see nowhere it says the word alone after the word his work or his deed. So some translation they add that in order to save uh, uh, Muhammad from being uh, busted and show his ignorance and his stupidity and his contradiction he says something in one place he said the opposite different place so are we going to be rewarded by guardian and women with big breast if we do work or we will not Muhammad explained clearly saying no you will not be rewarded for because of any right righteousness you do including me it's just based on luck if Allah, he warped me with his mercy. And how Allah, he warped with the mercy? It is what Allah, he wrote for you when he, when he created you. All right, as you see in the hadith in front of you. And actually, if you remember, we mentioned uh, uh, before the story uh, uh, of the boy uh, who Al-Khadr killed. And Muhammad, he says that this person, if you remember the chapter we are reading, chapter 18, verse number 80 and 81, so Muhammad he says that this person, this child, the boy, he was made created as a kafir. When he he was destined, read carefully, the boy Al Khadr he was uh, he killed was destined to be this believer. So this is the whole purpose of Islam. It's nothing to do with you. It's a religion of destiny and based on your luck, how lucky you are. So if your destiny was before when Allah he made you to go to hell or to be this believer, eh, you know, you will go to hell, what you can do about it. But if Allah, he have a destiny for you to be a believer, well, you are the lucky one. That's it. So when, when they, they made the articles of those things, we laugh because this is absolutely false answers have nothing to do with the reality of Islam. If you remember, there's a hadith where Muhammad, he said, and this is Sahih Hadith, the message of Allah said, by the one, and look how Muhammad, how much he, he swear, and this is additional proof of a liar. Uh, you know, remember Jesus says, either you say yea, yea, or nay, nay, other, otherwise anything else is from the devil, and that is exactly what Muhammad is. He is a person speaking of the devil. This is why he keep using the name of his God, swearing left and right. So he says, by the one who is uh, uh, in his hand my soul is if you do not commit sin Allah would replace you with people who would commit sin and he's and and seek forgiveness from Allah and Allah certainly forgive them so here actually we got more clear answer for the purpose of Islam Islam does not really have any good purpose Islam to present to us that there's a God his name is Allah he's, he's lonely you know He's very lonely, and he created, uh, he created us supposedly uh, for a reason to worship him. Okay, that's good, but it's not enough if you worship him. You see, the Quran says, "Wama insa wa jin illa I did not create the ins and the, the the human and the genie except to worship me. So this is sound like the purpose of the creation. The answer no. It is part of the answer. Allah He don't want only people who worship. He want people who worship Him and beg for forgiveness. But why they will beg for forgiveness? Simply because they commit sin. Okay, and why they commit sin? 
because Allah he wrote for them in their destiny to commit sin for God <laughs> I have only created the jinn and mankind for for what to worship me the translation he is to serve me that's a false uh, translation nowhere it says the word ser serve me it says liabudun which means to worship you can change the translators always those translation are false actually I would I will take some time off from YouTube sometime soon and I will start finishing work again uh, faster finishing my uh, Quran translation so if you change the translator you will see how in a miraculous way the Quran change you know see there's a huge difference between serve me and worship me you know and here this guy support is smart so he add the word alone which is very funny so why Allah he created the mankind okay to worship him why he created even the genie to worship him but no that is not the only purpose Muhammad he made it more clear he not only he want people who worship he want people who commit sin and because they commit sin they beg for forgiveness so Allah is a person who is suffering from mental illness he is not happy if you are a good person he is happy if you are sick and ask for medicine it's like you know Allah is like a corrupt uh, pharmacy uh, uh, you know company like company who make med drugs and medicine and uh, like corona was a great business for them so the more people get sick the more they make money right uh, so if people don't get sick uh, nobody buy from me if nobody gets sick nobody will come to my door it's like the guy who make coffins you know the more people die the more he is good doing more money and he gets more excited and happy so like we have customers Allah is the same Allah he will kill you if you don't commit sin because you will not beg him for forgiveness if you don't commit sin and if you are saying I am exaggerating well, the, the, re the reference in the front of you the one who is saying that is Muhammad himself I'm not the one saying that so when Muhammad he said this he is he aware of what he is saying is he aware that this is mean that if we are good people Allah will hate us and he will destroy us is he aware that according to this that the bad ones is what Allah he like or what is required from you is to be bad and in the same time big for forgiveness and then you forgive you so uh, this is evil purpose same time as long all the evil happened because of Allah he wrote the evil inside us you know if you remember uh, Muhammad he he said in many places uh, like some stuff like uh, if you remember the the infant who died you know the infant an infant who died uh, and Aisha she thought that this infant he's a Muslim uh, by birth which means from a Muslim family and he will go to heaven so Aisha she said to Muhammad well this infant will go to heaven for he did not uh, you know he did not commit sin and he is so young to commit sin so he will be like a little bird in the heaven Muhammad as you see this is Sahih Hadith Muhammad he said to her don't be a foolish it might be the opposite because Allah he created in the backbone of their parents where they will be before he created them which means this infant he might go to hell as you see in the front of you and this is a very authentic hadith as you see so in Islam there is nothing is really uh, is about you believe or don't believe uh, you worship Allah then you go to heaven this is absolutely false Islam is based on luck it is what Allah he wrote for you in your destiny before you were created even the sin of Adam you know if you remember the story of Adam uh, debating with uh, uh, with Moses when Adam he debated with Moses you will see uh, Moses he said to Adam because of you you know because of you Adam we are out of heaven because of your sin and Muhammad when he tell this story is, is to explain a purpose so when Moses he says because of you Adam we are out of heaven and as you see this is a hadith reported many many times including Sahih Bukhari Muslims etc so uh, 
which means it's very authentic. Muslims cannot deny it. Uh, you will notice here that Adam, he said to Moses, are you going, are you blaming me for doing something Allah he written for me in my destiny, in my fate, 40 years before my creation? So imagine here the story, how silly it is, how stupid it is. So Adam's sin is not Adam's sin, it was Allah's sin. It is Allah who decided Adam would do this. Adam, he will, dis he will disobey him. Uh, Adam will eat from the tree. Adam will listen to his wife. Adam will be kicked out of heaven. It was all something planned by Allah. And Adam is just a person who do what Allah, he wanted to happen. So Adam is saying to him, are you stupid or what? You play me for something, I have nothing to do with it. It is my fate, 40 years before my creation. And here you need to ask yourself, Muhammad not only report this story, Muhammad, he said, so Adam confuted Moses, and he repeated that three times. As usual, Muhammad is obsessed with number three. So not only Muhammad, he said, what is the argument is, which is a very funny argument anyway. I mean, how Adam, he met with Moses, you let me, you, you tell me. But the crazy Muhammad, he said crazy stuff. So uh, uh, if Adam, he is saying, you cannot blame me for a sin I had to do, which Allah had designed for me or the, the, the destiny for me. And then Muhammad, he says, Adam, he refuted Moses. Adam, he refuted Moses and he repeat that three times. That's mean that he agree absolutely 100% with Adam answer. The sin of Adam was not Adam's sin. It was destiny by Allah. And here we ask ourselves, so why Adam was kicked out of heaven? How stupid is that? How stupid is that? So now we found uh, that, you know, this is totally a contradiction for Islam. Islam is a contradiction. Uh, Philip Mayer saying, you dummy CP, you Christian believe in religious sin. Okay, Mr. Uh, uh, the one who is calling me dummy, let us see who is the dummy. <clears throat> let us make you famous. Remember, it's you who said that word, not me. So don't be upset if I say it to you back. And you are welcome, my friend. Good to have a smart people. Let us see how genius your answer. In a second, everybody will start laughing at you and you will be laughing at yourself. Because you just said that the Christians believe in the original sin. Wonderful. Let me ask you, was Moses a Christian or he was a Muslim according to Muhammad? Are you there? Mr. Philip, didn't even use Muslim names, you know what I mean? Why is Musa a Muslim or he was a Christian? Are you there? Because remember you said that the Christian believe in the original sin. Was Musa, was he, a person who believe in the original sin as the Christians or he is not? Are you there? Are you going to hide under the couch now? Or? Thank you. So Mr. Philip, he said, he, I, I don't think your name is Philip. I think now you, become, you will become a Philip Drive and you will have a cross in the top of your head. Just wait in a second. You know the Philip Drive? Okay. So he was a Muslim. Guys, be my witness. So he agreed that Musa was a Muslim. Okay. So let's put your comment here too. Okay, so he was a Muslim. So you idiot. If he was a Muslim, then how he Moses believe in the original sin? Don't you see that Moses he says to Adam, he said to him, "Oh Adam, you are the our father who disappointed us and turned us out of heaven." <laughs> now I will give you ten thousand years to answer this. People will die in laughing at you, you idiot. Because if Moses was a Muslim, as Muhammad told you, then how come Moses, he died and still he don't understand what Islam teach? And especially he's a prophet. He's not like a guy making a YouTube video. This guy is a prophet. He led a nation. Allah, he wrote the Torah for him by his hand. And yet, Moses don't understand that the, the, the original sin is wrong. Because as you see, 
<laughs> Moses believe in the original sin. <laughs> So, by your statement, you idiot, you prove to us again that Muhammad cannot be a prophet of God because this is funny and silly. How you say that Moses is uh, a person who is a prophet of Allah? He's not a companion of a prophet. He is a prophet himself. And then we asked you, was Moses a Muslim? You say, yeah, he was a Muslim. Okay, that's wonderful. Then how the Muslim Moses believe in the original sin? Huh? Idiot, that was the what that's not what the hadith is saying, guys. The hadith is not saying that. <laughs> How is that? Guys, the hadith, look, look what look what he say. Idiot. That, that is not what the hadith is saying. No, this is what the hadith is saying. Here we go. Let us put it for you. Look, look at this. Look at this joker. He's in trouble. He doesn't know what to do. You know, poor Muslims. I feel sorry for you. Following a stupid prophet will not save you. Idiot. That is not what the hadith is saying. You donkey. Read with me. It says, Adam, he says, Musa, he said to Adam, O oh Adam, you are our father who disappointed us and turned us out of paradise. So why we are out of paradise? Because of Adam's sin. This is what the original sin is. <laughs> hmm. I mean, in the front of them in the screen, and he says, it doesn't say that. Like, read it. It doesn't say that. Okay, it doesn't say that, CP. Like, Abdul, read it. Because of you, because of you, Adam, we are out, we are disappointed. Because of you, we are off to a paradise. It doesn't say that he is uh, believing in original sin. So what is original sin? Original, do you know what original means? Go back all the way to Adam. This is what original. Idiot. Anyway, I think, you know, I think you believe in the Prophet Muhammad after you watch the Pink Panther movie. Because you compare between them and you notice that your prophet, uh, you know, he is a smarter, you know, especially when he said the word hamburger. I mean, what you can do. Stupidity is amazing. So the purpose of Islam, there is no purpose except to serve Muhammad, the man who want to kill, who want to rape, he want to get as many women as he can. This is why we see Muhammad saying, attack the Roman and get the blondie girls. That is the purpose of Islam. Otherwise, as a religion, there's no even religion. This is a collection of stupid stories. Flying carpet of Suleiman. Suleiman died, died standing, and he was standing for a year, which is true, by the way. I mean, I bought, by the way, a stick from Amazon, and the stick is made from, uh, like, um, uh, 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 you know, aluminium, aluminium. Uh, which means it's not going to be eaten by the termite. Uh, and then I will open the camera before I die, and I will go live broadcasting, and then none of you will notice that I am dead. Why? Because I'm standing. I mean, it makes sense. And only a prophet of God, he can come with such a story. No one, he can come with such a thing. You have to be really, truly, truly, truly a prophet of God who is scientifically approved. Because remember, Muhammad was saying uh, he have a lot of science discovery according to Muslims. So when we decree the death for him, who? Solomon. Nothing informed them. Who? The genie. <laughs> uh, uh, by the way, where it says... Uh, the, the genie, okay. And it says, oh, it says in the previous verse that he controlled the genie. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, it says in the verse, actually, uh, when he fell down, the jinn didn't notice that he is dead. But look at the stupid story here. I mean, there is, is that the only way to notice that somebody is dead if he is standing? And how somebody, he died and he was dead for a year, and yet nobody noticed that his wife did go in. Okay, honey, you want to eat, honey? Uh, he didn't answer. Okay. 
the ministers, this guy is a king. This guy is not a person who lives like off a grid like those on YouTube in the middle of nowhere. So if you die, nobody will notice about you unless somebody one day come to visit you, maybe by mistake. This is a king. He have a kingdom. He have an army. He have generals. He have soldiers. He have ministers. He have wives. So the guy he died, and this is in chapter thirty-four, verse number fourteen. And by the way, the Muslim they might say to you, he's lying. Doesn't say that he died for a year. Uh, oh, no, hold on. You know, don't don't shoot the messenger. Okay. Here we go. This is your Ibn Kathir book. Hmm? Chapter 34, verse number 14. And this is the interpretation of your fellow, Ibn Kathir. And it says here, Mujahid and Hassan and others and blah, 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 blah. They said that he stayed, read carefully, let me zoom in. He stayed like that. Like that what? He was leaning on the stick. He remained leaning on his stick after he died. Okay? So he stayed like that for how long? He stayed like that for a long time, nearly a year. And when the creatures of the earth, which kind of worms, talking about termite, chew his stick, it becomes so weak and he fell in the ground. Obviously, this is a story no one can come with except a prophet of God like Muhammad. Nobody notice. And this is what we witness today, actually. The guy, his name is Philip. He did not notice that Moses believed in the original sin. It doesn't say that CP. So here we have a clear proof that Muhammad, he have a big purpose of his time, is to believe in cartoon and Mickey Mouse. You know, Suleiman, he have a flying carpet, can fit for 600,000 chair. He can carry all his kingship in the top of it. Uh, Suleiman, he uh, uh, he went to the bathroom. He gave his ring, the Lord of the Ring, you know, which controlled the kingdom uh, to his wife because it's haram to take the, the, the ring of Allah inside the bathroom. Uh, and then the shaitan, he came in the image of uh, Suleiman, he took the ring and he wore it, and then he became the king, and then Suleiman, he lost his kingdom, and then with the wives, they noticed that this new husband, or Suleiman, but he is like his shaitan, but he is in the image of Suleiman, he is so good in bed, which is not right. I mean, they noticed that he never stopped, like, never, never, never stop, never stop. So they noticed that this is going to be true. This is not the power of sexual drive of a human. So they told the elders. And the elders decide to kick him out because he, there's no way this is Suleiman. And then Shaitan, when he heard they would do that, he ran away from the palace and he threw the, king, uh, the ring. I mean, here the story is really stupid. I mean, if the guy, he controlled everything by the ring and he is wearing the ring, who cared about the elders? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, just let it go, let it go. I mean, don't ask questions. If the second you ask questions, Islam collapse. So he went and he threw the ring in the ocean, brother. And then Suleiman, because he was kicked out from the palace, he became a putter. Not Harry Putter, this is the different putter, the one who carries stuff for people in the port. So one day there was a guy, he bought fish. And Solomon, he says to him, I will carry those fish for you to your home. What you give me in return? The guy, he said to him, I will give you a fish or two fish, you know, as a payment. Suleiman, he carried the fish for this guy to his door. And then the guy, he gave him the two fish. Suleiman, he went to his place where he sleep and under, under, under the stairs. He's a poor now. And he opened the fish and he found the ring. Isn't it so beautiful? Now, I change the Muslim to say I'm lying and this does not exist in the books of Muslims. Anyone want to challenge me? <laughs> so anyway, I'm not going to keep you long because I want to let you go relax and enjoy your dreams. And now all of you think about how you can fool your mother-in-law because she might have a party when you die. So you buy a steak and be sure that termite, or maybe treat it, like, you know, spray it so termite can get close to it or maybe paint it, you know, just paint it. Uh, so like your mother-in-law, she opened the door and you, but you are dead now, you know, you are dead. But you are standing, and your mother-in-law, she say, 
Uh, are you there, my son-in-law? And you don't, don't answer, okay? Because you are dead anyway. But she will not notice that you are dead because you are standing, my friend. So beautiful. And your mother-in-law, you know, she spent her life thinking that you are standing and that she will say to herself, oh, my son-in-law, how powerful he is. He can stand like this all this time. For a year you are standing and you don't even sit down. You are a hero, my friend. How you can do that? You don't even go to the bathroom? I mean, how you can hold it? Don't you need to eat or something? <laughs> True story. <laughs> and you know, the funny is, they want to try to, conv to convince us that Islam is a religion. And, uh, <laughs> oh boy, look look here, look, look at the details, look at the details, because we have to explain to you, we have to explain to you, we cannot do that. So then, nothing informed them the genie of his death except the little worms of the earth, which kept slowly, <laughs> slowly, look how slowly it is, like slowly, slowly grounding or gowning away his stick. You see how slowly it is? It took them a year. A year. And you know what? There is no way Suleiman he was using like a uh, good kind of uh, lumber. I think he was using wood he bought from Home Depot. So like the, those uh, worms, they open uh, their eyes in the morning. <sighs> okay, what is for breakfast? They go to the, to the stick of Suleiman. <laughs> and they start like, mm -hmm. And then their belly start, like is full, so now we stop, we take a nap, okay? <laughs> Took them a year, brother. A year. <laughs> and and by the way, like uh, the wives of Suleiman, when they entered the room, they did not notice there is somebody eating his steak, like the, uh, the, those that termite all over. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, obviously, truly, I am convinced that there is a purpose of this religion and the purpose is to believe in Mickey Mouse and Tom and Jerry, you know, and, you know, it's very, very deep. This is very deep religion and, you know, we can find a lot of uh, purpose there. I mean, what is the purpose? What is the purpose of the story anyway? I mean, you see, Allah, he spoke about Jesus' crucifixion in less than eight words. And the story of the ants and the flying car, but he have a lot of time for it. I mean, what we learn from this? What is this? And why Allah did not give Muhammad the same? Why he did not give him the ring and the flying carpet and the flying horse? And the... <laughs> uh, and look, look, uh, 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 Philip, Philip. He is supposedly smart. Look what he is quoting for you. <coughs> Philip, you are so deep, man. You are so deep. You see, they cannot refute us. They can't answer, so they try to change the topic. But no problem, Philip. I'm here to serve you, my friend. You are welcome. Look what Philip, he said to us. He said, he quote from the Old Testament, that a human, they will bake their uh, food with dunk of uh, a human or animals, Abdul. Do you want me to show you that the Muslim they do that until now? So what the verse there is saying that a human being will suffer a lot to the point they will use even their dunk to cook in it, not to eat it. And if I go right now in a prophet Google, you idiot, you will see that this is exactly what your Muslims today do. I will show you Islamic countries, not any other countries. Very silly people, you know, look what we are showing them, the stupidity in the Quran, and look what they show us. So if you go and search uh, for animal dunk fuel or human fuel, uh, which countries you will see they, see they are doing uh, that? Like, is that Bangladesh and Pakistan, my friend? Is that Bangladesh and Pakistan? Hmm? Do you see it? 
So if this is a problem for you, well, obviously you are against your fellow Muslims. Oh, here we go. This is a Muslim lady. She is working in the dunk, and this is Jamaica fuel. Is that bad? Is that what do you think? You know, all of you, you use that, and until lately, like until the Western, they find the oil for you. Otherwise, all the Middle East, all of them, with no exception, they use the poo poo of the animals and even their poo poo, mix it with the dry grass and make a fuel of it. And then they cook on it. Because the purpose of that, look, she is making a bread for you. Do you see it, Philip? Those are the Muslims, those are not the Christians. So, a very silly argument, you know, they are, they are bankrupt. And, you know, we are showing you the stupidity of the Quran, and this is what you get away. This is the problem? Okay, no problem. And even your prophet, he used even to clean his bum with, uh, with dunk, you know. And then he claimed that Allah told him that the dunk of the animals is the food of the genie. <laughs> All right. Uh, Anyway, you know, so when, when they speak about the purpose of, uh, of Islam, I really laugh because I don't find any purpose except disturbing peace of mankind, uh, spreading hate, uh, killing each other, Muslims even killing Muslims, non-stop since the time of Muhammad until now, uh, believing in fictions and stupid stories, and then making yourself think that you are superior because Islam is a supremacist cult. Islam teach that Islam is supremacist white religion and Muslims they have the right to enslave everybody and to put a leech around every human neck. And as you see this is what Muhammad said. You are the best for mankind, the best of mankind, chapter 3 verse 110. Okay, what is the best for mankind? What does that mean? You might think that maybe the scientist, maybe no. The best for mankind is those who bring the mankind and they have a chain around their necks. Islam is a very ugly, disgusting cult. It is uh, the purpose of it to disturb peace, to create war, to spread hatred, and to make you believe in the false god, his name is Allah. This is why I say in the conclusion of the purpose of Islam is it is satanic. And based on what I showed you, that Allah, he made Adam sin, Allah, he make you sin, and then Allah will punish you for your sin. Obviously, Allah is driving you not and make you feel stupid, and then you lose your ability to think deeply. You know, when, when even the Quran says that Allah uh, is the one who decides for you how much adultery you will do. So why Allah will punish you for adultery? If Allah is the one who wrote for me my destiny, and the destiny include everything, why does God he want to punish me for a fixed portion of adultery, which a man he will do in as a must of necessity, as you see. He must commit. It's not like a, something you do willingly. You must commit. So why Allah will punish me for such a thing? Obviously, this cult is uh, satanic, for everything lead us to Satan. And... Uh, you know, this religion is just try to convince you by tempting you. You know, uh, the first question I asked myself when I was very young, um, this was just last year, by the way, uh, when I start reading the Quran, and then I find that the Quran is promising me as an example, women would be depressed. I mean, what? why does God he promise me such a promise? what what is for i mean what is going to what is missing there why does god he is god he is when you say god we speak about something holy we believe that there is a holiness form uh, of something mis mysterious but for sure he is holy then we find this god he is speaking to our desire sexual desire why does god he want me to believe in him in exchange he will give me women with big breasts and what is the value of big breast for God? You see, if somebody come to you, let's say you have a birthday, and thank God I never have a birthday party, I don't believe in them. Uh, 
because I mean, why people celebrate their birth? I mean, what, what for? I mean, do you think you live in heaven? <laughs> anyway, so uh, if you have a birthday party and then you invite your friends, and one of them he give you a, a book that is saying how to be successful in business. The other one, how to be a, a good father. The other one, he gave you a book, uh, how uh, to be uh, good in ethic with the society. And one of them, he says to you, he gave you a, a, a Playboy, or let us say a sex video, porn. Okay, the, the gift to speak of the one who is giving the gift, correct? Telling you how each one of them, he think. My gift speak on me. What is my gift to you? So now we are talking about God, not about a bunch of guys who they are maybe too young, they are horny, they are teenage, they are, you know, drunk, maybe. But this is God. So what is the God or what kind of God he promised me in this private part? Women have an English vagina fit for that in this private part of the male. Women with big boobs. What, what, 70 years orgasm. There is something wrong. The Messiah, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. And I have no better words than what the words of my Lord said. From their fruits, you shall know them. If this is the fruit of your God, well, I have to say this God is a pimp. For this is what pimps they do. If you've ever been in Las Vegas, you know, I, when I used to be with the army, they used to buy us ticket. We don't control the ticket where to stop. So sometimes, most of the time actually, uh, the, the airline stop in Las Vegas and sometimes even they give you a hotel. And then you go in the bathroom in the hotel or in the, which is a casino anyway. Uh, you'll find little cards in the bathroom where men they stand to do their business. You will find little cards have pictures of girls, naked girls, and there's numbers to call, prostitution. And you will find that those girls with big boobs, you know, big boobs, okay? Yeah. So this is Allah. Allah is tempting you. Look, he says to you, you have a garden and there's a grave, sorry, a, a grape in the garden. And right away, he connect the grape and the garden to women. He didn't even mention the word women, sadly. I mean, look like women are not exist even in the, in the dictionary of Allah. He mentioned big boobs. You see, in the translation, they say here to you, women. But in Arabic, nowhere it says women. Nowhere. It says big boobs. As simple as that. And then after that, a cup. Cup of what? Of wine. So wine, food, sex. That is Allah. Obviously, there is something badly behind this cult. A true God, he did not need some such a such an advertising for himself in such a way. And if you believe in me, I will give you women with big boobs, and you will have seventy years orgasm. That cannot be true. So when the Lord he says, "From their fruits you shall know them," I believe this is the Bible, and this is the wisdom, and this is the word of God from their fruits not from what they say all of us we say things and we do sin all of us we are sinners if anyone says to you he is not a sinner he's lying to you all of us we are sinners but the lord he made it clear from their fruits which means we have bad fruits and we have good fruits so if you are a person who have only bad fruits obviously you are following the devil for sure if you are a person who has a fruit let us say the ugly one is more than the good ones Obviously, you are satanic too. But if you are a person who have a bad fruits in a big, nice tree full of good fruits, that is the way a human being must be or should be. Resisting the bad fruits, like you try to make them drop from your branches and you try your best to give good fruits. So a human being, he sin, but his sin should not be covered in all his branches, should be something he is resisting it's like an illness sickness like a fungus over the tree and this tree is trying to fight the fungus to stop the fungus from spreading around in islam islam itself is a fungus when a fun when i grow in your head you don't think about god no more you think about women sex 
if you go and read the stories or you watch the videos of those sheikhs talking about what the women they will do to you when you enter the bedroom, they will jump on you. They will start kissing you all over. I mean, even the description is disgusting. Uh, why does God uh, is like that? Uh, Mr. Philip is saying, can I attack your book? You stupid, you just did. Isn't you the one who posed for me? About the dunk? few minutes ago and isn't it your prophet he keep attacking us from the first page in the Quran where he says don't make us like the lost Christians and the cursed Jews don't you recite the chapter of Al-Fatiha five times a day don't you recite a chapter of at tawbah where it says kill the Christians and the Jews so can you talk to your book I mean look when they are unable to answer they play victim and that is another side of the satanic cult. They attack your book 24 hours, 7 days a week. Actually, if you go to all the churches anywhere in the world, you will not find anyone, any church, speaking against Islam. Nowhere. But you will not find a single mosque. Don't speak every day against Christianity and Judaism and the Hindus, etc. So when you start spanking this cult, they play victim. And not only that, you know, I, for me, with my experience with this cult, the Muslim, they make fun of you 24 hours, 7 days a week for following the Bible, the Bible, man, <laughs> Bible, it's corrupt, brother. But the second you start doing as I do, they say to you, is that what Jesus taught you? Is it Jesus says the one who gave, hit your right cheek, give him the other one? Huh? Well, you make fun of me 24 hours, 7 days a week, all my life, and the second I start spanking you, you start asking me to be Christian. I thought Christians are not good. I thought Christianity is horrible. Do you see the stupidity? I thought you are Christian. You know, actually once I had a fight, you know, a physical fight, real fight. And then the guy, after he got what he deserved, he says to me, I thought you are Christian, so he, he thought I'm a Christian, so I will be nice, you know, I will not beat him up. So he came, he started like, you know, uh, harassing and doing stupid stuff. And he pushed me first time. I said, don't do that, man. Second time. Anyway, he got what he deserved. And then after that, he said to me, I thought you are a Christian. <laughs> I said, I am. <laughs> so he thought, if you are a Christian, that's mean I can beat you and you are very nice. You will. Jesus says to you, if I hit you in the right cheek, don't give him the other one. My friend Jesus, he says that about the law, to obey the law. Don't be violent, to be evil. Don't return evil by evil. But if you are a scumbag, well, I will teach you how to behave. Don't worry, be happy. So they make fun of you 24 hours, seven days a week. And the second, uh, you show them how stupid their book, they ask you to be Christian again. A Christian who don't speak about Islam. Is that what Jesus taught you? To speak against other people's religion? To disrespect their belief? Yes, Jesus, he taught me that actually. Jesus even, he did more. Jesus, he said, he called them, he, he called even the Jews who they are worshiping the true God, he called them hypocrites. Not like you worshiping false God, kissing black stones, and yet you claim you are not a pagan. So. Jesus, he taught me, and from Jesus we learn. And Jesus, his holiness, is what we follow. Not a guy who claimed to be a prophet of God, yet he have zero miracles. Even the Arab, they keep saying to him, why you don't have a sign, just one sign? Can you give us one sign? And then Muhammad, he said to them, oh, Allah, he told me that he refused to give you a sign because people don't believe in them anyway. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Philip, Philip, you can have 10,000 verses from the Bible, still you can't answer what I'm saying. You can't answer one verse of what I'm saying. And this is what you must then do. Instead of refuting us, you run forward. Let me show you from the Bible, okay? <laughs> So what we will do with this madness in the front of us? Let me show you from the Bible. My friend, in the Bible it says, Jesus, he walked in water. Jesus, he resurrected people from death. Jesus, he was holy. In the Quran it says that too. 
But in the Quran too, it says Muhammad was filthy. And even he said that Allah said to him, May Allah, may Allah. <laughs> I can't believe it. May Allah forgive your sin. Like what's wrong with you? How Allah, look, the Muslim translate the word sin as fault. How the word sin became fault? Very simple, change the translator. <laughs> <laughs> so while Jesus in the Bible is forgiving sin he forgives sin and the Muslim they say to you I challenge you show me one verse in the Bible says Jesus I'm God he forgives sin you idiot even the Jews they said to him who is this guy who forgives sin and they said to him he said to them Jesus why you want to kill me they said we are not killing you for for an act you wrong act you did but for claiming to be God how he claimed to be God he forgives sin he said to the person he said to the Jews he said which one is easier to say to him your sin is forgiven or to say to him stand up carry your chair and walk this is how easy it was to Jesus your sin is forgiven while your prophet here saying that Allah told him that Allah saying to Allah may Allah forgive your sin good luck with that so I want to say thank you guys for being here don't forget to download the video and share it with your friends and then they will see you soon again Christ is Lord Islam made by a dummy for the dummy don't be a dummy we love Muslims yes Jesus he order us to love everybody and God himself he said for God he loved the world he sent his only begotten son so yes, we love the Muslims, but we don't love the evil of Islam. Islam is evil. Muhammad is evil. So we love you to save you. We love you to show you. We love you to guide you. But we don't love you to give you false words and just to make you happy. A person who cares for you and you are taking drugs or you are sick or you are doing something wrong is a person who stands against your wrong to fix it so you don't go to hell. We are trying to save you. We are not here to make fun of you. We are here to show you that Islam is wrong. Islam is a stupid. And if you decide to believe in it, this is your business. But for us, it's obvious. From their fruits, you shall know them. And with the words of the Lord, we end. Thank you. God bless you. And we'll see you soon again. Take care.